All right, so good morning. Good morning and welcome back to JPCE Spiritual Talk. It's Chair Campbell. So this morning's devotional, press on, right? Yeah, we got to keep pressing on, right? To press on living a life of righteousness in Christ. And a small reading from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. But before we get into this morning devotional study, I'm going to start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine the hearts of loving master with the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the and open up the eyes of your mind, that we may understand your teachings in scripture. Help us apply what we learn so that you're having conquered simple desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Through Christ our God, you are alive to you, the glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God again and again. My mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. My pleasure to bring you all God's word. Good morning. Welcome back. So this morning's devotional, press on. We'll jump right into it this morning. So press on. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The world will tell you that the dominating influence in your life is your past. Hmm. Let's read that again. The world will tell you that the that the that the dominating influence in your life is your past. You come from a difficult home life that will determine the direction of your life. If your culture has was treated unfairly, it will dictate the condition of your life today. If you were hurt or abused, or if you or if your youth was spent in rebellion, the, the remainder of your life will be spent struggling with your past. The world is preoccupied with the past because it faces an uncertain future. Christians, on the other hand, live in freedom because Christ has overcome our past. The old things have been done away with, and the new things have come. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. God has so totally forgiven the Christian's sin that he chooses not to remember it. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. Christians do not forget the past, but we are not controlled or motivated by it. The Christian looks to the future with hope. The people of the world focus on what? The people of the world focus on what they are overcoming. Christians focus on what they are becoming. Christians know that the Holy Spirit is conforming them into the image of Christ. Christians know that ultimately they will stand before Christ to give an account of their actions and will spend an eternity in the presence of God. Christians know that eventually every injustice will be addressed and every hurt comforted. They know that Satan and death itself will finally be brought to an end. The Christian future is so full of rich and, and exciting. The Christian future is so full and rich and exciting that it supersedes whatever happened in the past. If you are preoccupied with your past, ask God to open your eyes to the incredible future that awaits you and begin, like Paul, to press on to what is ahead. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So another beautiful reading, another beautiful reflection. And it's true, right? We sometimes focus too much on our past, right? But as Christians, right, when we come to, to Christ, we are not to, to preoccupy ourselves with our past, but to keep moving forward, right, to press on, right? Our past should no longer matter, right? And sometimes when we are preoccupied with the thoughts of our past, those thoughts are not coming from God, right? Coming from the spiritual evil, right, that's out there, that want you to go tie yourself down to your past right? so every time your past comes up and it's 
starting to take a hold of you. You might want to stop and think that what is the evil trying to do? Instead, turn to Christ and turn to the, the future that you have, right? We all have nasty past. I know I do. But I keep pressing forward now. Now, my past follows me wherever I go. It's true. You know, there's a lot of people who still look at me as what I used to be in the past. They still think about the person I used to be, not the person I am now. But here's the thing. I keep pressing on because whatever I did in the past, I, I'm no longer that person. I've already been forgiven through God for all those things I've done. I've already held myself accountable. So we must, like the devotional saying, we must keep pressing on with our future. Don't let the past weigh you down. Let's take a look at some of these verses this morning before we close out. So Philippians chapter 3, right? starting in verse 12. So pressing towards the goal, right? Or pressing towards true righteousness. Right? I said that at the beginning. Right? So starting right there in verse 12. So Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. So pressing towards the goal. And it says, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfect. But I press on that I may hold, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid upon me. Brethren, do not count, I, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of, of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if any thing you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what is the goal, right? What is the goal? So what is the goal of the maturing Christian, right? So a Christian that's maturing, what is the goal? Look at verse 14. It says, I have, in verse 14, it says, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what is the, the call of a maturing Christian? For Paul, it is <clears throat> that we be engaged in the struggle of faith, confident that Christ has made us his own. But knowing we are not yet, what, perfectly. Right? So knowing that we are not yet, what, perfect. Right? Thus, we are zealous what to press on. Look at verse 12. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid, laid a hold of me. <laughs> So we so we know we are not yet perfect. And thus we are zealous what to press on. That's verse 12. Toward the completion of our what salvation, the prize of the upward call of God. That was in verse 14. The resurrection to what eternal life. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what is what is so what is Paul saying? Right? He's indicating working toward salvation. Right? That as Christians, we are to work towards our salvation. Right? So when we forget the past right, and put that behind us and look towards the future goals which we have in Christ, Paul is saying we are to work out our own salvation. Right? Our salvation becomes our responsibility, something that we work towards right? each and every day of our lives. Right? We live to be a better version of ourselves. And so it's something that we keep pressing towards, right? That's why as Orthodox Christians, right, we focus so much on prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, right? Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, right? Because as Orthodox Christians, we find a way to, to ground ourselves, right? It's 
getting closer to God is not only just important from the aspect of what the Bible says, but in order to draw close to God, right? In order to draw close to God, <clears throat> you have to sometimes make yourself uncomfortable. Right? So fasting is one way to make yourself uncomfortable. Right, because it brings on temptations. Right, it brings on struggle. Right, so you stay in prayer. You're fasting. Right, and then almsgiving is the way to do. It's the way to knock. Right, when we say ask, seek, and knock, almsgiving is another way to knock on that door by doing something out of humility, authentic faith. Right, faith is something that we always have to work towards it's limited right faith is sometimes limited that's the reason why faith and works go together right and that's what paul is trying to say here it's basically talking about how faith and works go together right just an interesting read an interesting breakdown right work towards your salvation all right, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 through 17. This will close us out for this morning. We'll start at verse 11. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Starting in verse 11, it says, Knowing therefore the care of the Lord, we, pers <clears throat> we persuade men. Knowing therefore the care of the Lord, we persuade, we persuade men. But we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your conscious, your consciousness. Be reconciled to God. For, for we do not command ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on your behalf, that you may have, have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For we love, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge. Thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should, should no longer live for themselves, but for him who had died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard our one according to the flesh. So it says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we, we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, it... Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Be behold, all things have become new in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So up here, look at, starting back at verse 11, right? So in Paul's gospel, right? In his gospel, right? Paul seeks to what? Persuade men. Right there in verse 11. Right? On two fronts. One, by the care of the Lord. Look at verse 11. Knowing therefore the care of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God. And I also trust are well known in your consciences. So first front, by the care of the Lord, verse 11. The possibility of judgment to eternal death. And two, by the love of Christ. Look at verse 14. For the love of Christ. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. So by the love of Christ, verse 14, the divine invitation to live for Christ. That was in verse 15. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who had died for them and rose again. Right, right there in scripture. Beautiful, right? So the divine invitation to live for Christ, to eternal life. <clears throat> the heart of Paul's message here is baptism, where life and death meet. Christ died and rose for us that we might die and rise in him. Look at verses 16 and 17. Right? So Paul did not know the historical Jesus, did he? No. So Paul did not know the historical Jesus. As he voluntarily took on a morality, lived on earth, and was known what according to the flesh. Verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though 
we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. So Paul did not know the historical Jesus. As he voluntarily took on, <clears throat> on her, took on our morality, lived on earth, and was known according to the flesh. That's verse 16. Nobody knows Jesus that way after his ascension. For his mortal flesh had been transformed into an immortal body. Even so, our old bodies are transformed into new creation. That was right there, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So transform to a new creation in Christ. Because God created all things, so Christ, he will transform and reunite all things, material as well as spiritual, to himself. Christ, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So keep pressing toward the goal of righteousness. And keep pressing towards that goal, being that new creation in Christ, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, Salvation, right? So by our readings, you can tell that we're being told right, that we must work towards our salvation right? each and every day. We must be watchful throughout our days. There's a lot of things out there that can bring us down. So it's good to work towards our salvation and be watchful and understand and understand this one thing that, that if you have truly come to Christ, you are, you are, you are no longer the same creation, but a new one. The old has passed away. The old is now dead. It's nailed to the cross. I think in that way, your old man nailed to the cross, your old woman nailed to the cross. It's all old. It's, it's been nailed, right? Live each and every day. Right, as that new creation, <laughs> don't look in the past. Sometimes it's easier said than done, trust me. But I fight really hard not to allow my past to come back and play mind games. I press towards being that new creation, I press towards the goal. The goal is living in Christ, right? Living righteousness in Christ that's the goal. Be that new creation, right? To be salt and light of the earth. Season with some flavor, right? You know, I mean, that's the thing. We must not forget our goal. That's all I have this morning. Thank you all so much. From the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to us through divine. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to us through divine season words. You eliminate the souls of sinners and comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. I'm going to blame this life and conduct without approaching Christ, O oh Lord. You are alive and to you will be glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. The part of peace, in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Glory. Peace, shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. All right, for this evening, all right, for, for big, we're going to be back in Acts. So we're going to pick up where we left off in Acts. We're going to read. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 13. And I'm going to stop at verse 8 in chapter 2. So this evening, we'll, we'll, we'll read Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 13, and we'll stop in Acts chapter 2, verse 8, is where we'll stop. Right? That's what we'll cover this evening in Acts. So thank you all again. All right. Jerry Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day. Whenever and however, he's mentioned us find you all. Right? Peace be with you all, go in peace, shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. JPCE Spiritual Talk, never ever hold back. Right? Thank you all so much. Seek truth. I'm out.